Now with that, we're going to look into how one can overcome challenges in um, implementing the TCFD recommendations, and in particular, the internal um, challenges that you might be facing. So often when we train on TCFD, we get a series of questions from participants. They range from how do I get leadership buy-in to what should we report first or how do I display this information to uh, report readers. So what we'd like to do today is go through a few of these questions with you and, and help give you some tips on how to move forward on these um, difficult areas that companies often find. So one of the first questions we often get is, how do I get leadership from my buy-in? First of all, I think what's usually the most helpful with getting your board and your senior management on board with TCFD is to provide them the current trends. And that starts with who are the key investors that are supporting the TCFD. So if you haven't checked it out yet, you can go to the TCFD's website where all the supporters are listed and take a look and see if your own investors are listed as official supporters. Now, to become a, an official supporter of the TCFD, it requires the leadership of that company to commit publicly their support to the TCFD. So your organization can do that as well. But this is usually a good starting point to give you an idea of who are your stakeholders that are already supporting this and who are looking for that information. The second important trend is really the regulatory context. Now, this is something we've already discussed with all of you um, in previous sessions, but really to hit it home here, it's important to use this tool, at the trends changing in the regulatory movement when convincing your leadership of the merits of reporting on climate related information. Now, as we mentioned before, the TCFD recommendations were prepared initially to be voluntary, but increasingly governments are coming to the conclusion that a mandatory approach is necessary. We expect, for example, the EU will be mandating climate-related reporting when the non-financial reporting directive is updated, and a number of governments have already made this mandatory. So if you're gonna get ahead of this wave, now's the time to do it. A third reason or a third uh, tool you can use is benchmarking, and that's benchmarking your practices against those of your peers and the sector leaders. Consider what other companies in your sector are supporting the TCFD, and reporting using its recommendations. Maybe look at what other practices are being used as well and see how you can learn from your peers. While there are certain advantages at being ahead of your peers, you certainly don't want to be left behind. Next, you can try training or education for your board and management. This is something that you can work with partners on. For example, you can direct them towards these videos. You can work with your local stock exchange, which often will provide tools for you. Also, you can work with the partners that are involved in this training um, with CDSB, which does a lot of training, as well as the IFC. And many other private companies are also working on TCFD training. So by getting your board and your senior management trained on what is climate related disclosure and the advantage of using TCFD as a starting point will also help you to move this forward in your organization. Then, of course, the final two is to explain the strategic and financial implications of climate change and to identify the potential climate related opportunities. So this is something that we've reviewed previously, but to come back to it, the risks and opportunities related to climate change really does impact everyone, all companies and all sectors. While the TCFD focuses particularly on high risk sectors, it also helps identify risks and opportunities for all companies. So this can be a good starting point as well to help bring that home for your leadership or for other people in your company. The next question that we often get asked is, how do I include this in my mainstream report? Now, we really tried to hit this home in previous lessons that the purpose of TCFD is not to create an additional uh, reporting burden. It's also not to create additional reports. The real objective of the TCFD is to include all of this in our mainstream financial reports. And that's where um, companies often get a bit stuck in and need a bit of support on how. So here's a few tips on getting you started on that. So first, a separate TCFD disclosure is often the starting point. I know we said not to do it, <laughs> but if you need to start that way, it's a great way to get started. When you start crafting that, you often realize how it links into your mainstream reporting. And then that links to the second tip where you can work with authors of the different chapters of your annual report in order to help embed all of the areas we're working on into the report you're already working on. 
So for example, if you already have a risk team that's putting together the risk analysis part of your annual report, work with them and discuss with them how climate change is already being integrated or needs to be integrated into their measurements. A third important tool is mapping or cross-referencing tables. So we've discussed before how you can use the SSE's TCFD checklist, which is in Annex 1 of the SSE's model guidance on climate disclosures. This simply provides you an easy table to go through and check which disclosures you have or do not have or what might be missing. And it helps you to determine where in your reporting they might already exist. A lot of companies then use such a table in their mainstream reporting to help direct investors to the right part in their report. It's often even titled a TCFD table or TCFD mapping so that investors or report users can easily find this information. Of course, the best starting point is something you're already doing. So as we've discussed, many other sustainability disclosures such as CDP are already mapped to the TCFD disclosure recommendations. So the best starting point is what you're already doing. And you can use the tools provided by whichever framework you are using, and they've already mapped them to the TCFD. So if you're using GRI, if you're using um, integrated reporting, check out the tools available from that particular framework, and they'll show you how best to map to the TCFD recommendations. And then finally, ensure that financially material information is in the mainstream report, and then additional information or non-material information can be provided in supplementary reports. So once participants wrap their head around how to start, where to put what where, they often wonder if they can do it all at once or how much of a time frame they should be expected to work on this. So we discussed in previous trainings with you a phased approach that the TCFD has offered, which brings you through three phases. This is another phased approach that we've recommended in the SSE's model guidance that's provided by the Transition Pathway Initiative. As you can see, they've classified different areas of the recommendations as different levels. What's important to see here on this slide is that it takes the report preparer from a movement of unaware to acknowledged and then building their capacity from an internal perspective and then an external strategy perspective. So the very first level, level zero, is being um, unaware, or at least in your reporting, unaware of any climate impacts that there might be. And then moving into level one is simply the acknowledgement that there are risks and opportunities related to climate change that your company is taking into consideration. Once you've made this acknowledgement, you can move up into the levels by building your capacity. Starting in level two, you'll want to build your capacity by starting to look at scope one and two emissions, for example, and kind of digging a bit deeper into the risks and opportunities that you've identified. And then if you want to go into the next level, level three, this is really integrating into the operational level of your organization. And then finally working into integrating into the strategy level of your organization. As we discussed with the three-phased approach with TCFD, this would be similar. It's going to be about a five-year from zero to hero. So give yourself some time, work on it bit by bit, and use the a checklist or the TCFD recommendations list to go through and just determine where you might be at now and where you can work towards. So another question we often get asked is how the TCFD recommendations fit with other reporting standards and frameworks. We've touched on this before, but we want to make sure it's very clear that if you've already started using another framework for your sustainability reporting or climate reporting, such as CDP, CDSB, GRI, IIRC, or SASB, the good news is you're already partway there. So all of these frameworks and standards have been mapped to the TCFD recommendations. And so if you go to the websites of any one of these companies, they will provide you additional information on how you can use what you're already reporting for TCFD. It's also important to note that existing information reported under these frameworks and standards can be used to align better with TCFD in your mainstream reports. So you might be already doing a GRI report, but you might just be including that information in your GRI report, not necessarily in your financial filings. So making sure that you're taking that information you have and determining how it best fits in your mainstream report. So that would always start with a materiality analysis and determining 
which information is most financially material to your company. Also to note that the IFRS are currently working on a prototype climate disclosure that's built upon the TCFD recommendations. So not to fear, you're not gonna get a new set of recommendations and that the TCFD Knowledge Hub provides a plethora of resources that you can use on connecting with all of these standards. So one of the final questions we often get asked is why should we disclose information if our peers are not? So at the very beginning, when we were talking about how to convince your board this is something important for your company, we discussed about comparing to your peers. So what do you do if your peers aren't yet reporting using the TCFD? Well, first of all, that's not going to be for long because this trend is moving fast. But of course, it's important to recognize that investors already know that there is risk and opportunities related to climate risk. So they are integrating this information already in, to inform their capital allocation decisions. So by not reporting this information, you are not signaling to them that it's not a risk to your company, but rather that you haven't taken this risk into consideration. So very important, the absence of disclosure does not mean investors will assume the absence of climate risk. Investors are already conducting a lot of their own analysis. So by you providing this information, it's not necessarily trying to contradict their analysis, but it's providing them additional information and showing to them that you as a company are already on top of this and you're integrating this into your own strategy to both capitalize on the opportunities, but of course, to mitigate the risks. And then of course, providing disclosures ensures up-to-date information because you never know what information your investors are using to calculate their own risk analysis of your company. And if they don't have up-to-date information, they might be creating inaccurate analysis of your level of risk. And finally, mandatory reporting is coming. So disclosing now will only prepare you for future regulations that are about to come. So really, the main focus is just Get started. The TCFD acknowledges that implementation of the recommendations would require a number of reporting cycles, and it is proposed around five-year implementation pathways uh, when the rec recommendations um, are first being introduced. So don't let perfection be the enemy of good and just get started now. Be as complete as possible and understand that this is a journey. We don't expect to see perfect disclosures immediately, nor do investors. They don't want simply more information, they want more accurate information. So use the TCFD disclosures to help you do that. Before we close out this section, just a quick quiz. So which of the following statements based on what we've discussed today would you say is true? Statement one, cross-reference tables can help to show where TCFD information is located in your report. Statement two, you can take a phased approach to implementing the TCFD over time. Statement three, existing reporting frameworks can be used to support TCFD disclosure. Statement four, investors are likely already assessing the climate risks impacting your organization or all of the above. Take a minute to look at these all and decide which you think is true. So you're all right. The answer was all of the above. All of these statements were indeed true statements for the TCFD. It can be very useful to include cross-reference tables. A phased approach is not only advised, but often required. Existing frameworks are indeed useful um, as a starting point for your TCFD disclosures, such as CDP or CDSB. And investors are already assessing the climate risks impacting your organization.